Vincent. AstraZeneca without a CEO since June, I think, mm -hmm. um, just announced uh, it's chosen someone today. That's right, yeah, they've picked a guy from Roche, uh, the big Swiss pharmaceutical company, Pascal Soyo. Um, he was uh, head of the Genentech division of Roche, a big biosciences group that they bought back in 2009. Um, so he's had a big job in pharma for the last few years. Very months. highly regarded, helped with the integration. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he, he has done all of that at Roche. And he's also had a sort of globe trotting career before that at Sanofi Aventis. And, and uh, so he's very experienced. And I think probably what AstraZeneca needs, actually. And why is that? Well, you know, the company has a couple of very specific problems. First of all, it's facing the industry's biggest patent cliff. So about half of its revenues, um, which are about $33 billion in total annually, so about half of that is going to disappear by 2016 mm -hmm. because patents have ex will expire on drugs that are sort of key to its performance. Uh, and the second problem is that its response to that so far has been a bit incoherent. It doesn't quite know what to do. It's been here and there, it's been trying this, it's been trying that, and nothing has quite and worked. A lot of late stale trials haven't come through. Absolutely, I mean, there's, th you know, there, there could be more problems ahead as well because you know, late stage trials are still ongoing and, and the whole en environment for these uh, tri drug trials is getting tougher and tougher. Um, first of all, m fewer of them are su succeeding, are actually getting to the final stage. And secondly, the regulatory process is becoming ferociously difficult. Um, that makes the whole process very expensive. So R&D is becoming a very expensive proposition for, for the drug companies. So they need to be very big. I think the question mark over AstraZeneca is whether it's big enough to justify a very heavy spend on R&D right now. So uh, there are the two problems. And the response that it has had up to now has been incoherent and nothing has quite worked. And I think Soria's job is to sort out what will work. What do you think this guy will do? Is he going to pour mo more money into R&D? Do you think he'll throttle back and play the company for cash? What do you think he'll do? I think that, you know, putting more money in into R&D, I don't think is going to quite work um, because I don't think AstraZeneca is big enough. It's only about half the size of its nearest competitors like Glaxo or Novartis. Um, and when I say half the size, I mean in terms of market cap sure. and the ability to raise funds and to generate the cash to uh, invest in R&D. Um, it, one thing that it has been doing is trying, it has made a couple of acquisitions, sort of small scale acquisitions in this year already. Um, and it's been farming out some of its late stage drugs to the likes of Pfizer and stuff. So going over the counter before the patent expires, mm. which is one way, I think a lot of companies are doing that. That's one way of, of, of getting extra revenue from the drugs that you, that you have the patent on. Um, but I think that there's a real soul searching that needs to go on at AstraZeneca. And looking at R&D and then looking at either farming it out or buying it in. And final question, what surprised me, I mean, people always talk about this sort of ongoing crisis at AstraZeneca, but actually the share price performance over one, three, five years is actually, you know, in line with the market or slightly better Absolutely. over five years. Um, what's the issue? Absolutely. Now, there's, there's a bit of a myth that AstraZeneca is an underperformer. It's not, actually. I mean, actually, it's done better on a sort of five-year period than GlaxoSmithKline, for example. Um, and uh, the, I th but the problem now is that there's a valuation gap. So it's trading at you know, almost half the level of Glaxo, Novartis, the sort of pool of big pharma companies based in Europe. That's a big issue for Pascal Sorio. He has to close that valuation gap. Well, let's gap. see if he can close it. And of course, he's not alone facing a patent cliff over the next couple of years. But thank you very much, Vincent.